Okay, we're back with Ken Kratz, and he's here to talk more about um, making a murder, and also the documentary "Murder in a Park," "Murder in the Park," which is a fra- favorite of mine and his. So, um, we were just talking about the narrative of um, the innocent man accused, and why it's so popular among the the left. Well, we let's first talk about the about the the documentary "A Murder in the Park." It's on okay. Netflix. Your um, your viewers or listeners should be able to go to Netflix and look up "A Murder in the Park." It's the story of Anthony Porter, uh, a uh, a man who had murdered uh, two young people in Chicago and uh, were um, was convicted based upon eyewitness uh, testimony um, as well as uh, as gathering. Uh, circumstantial uh, uh, evidence that uh, led to Mr. Porter's conviction and thereafter uh, his being placed on death row in the state of Illinois. Uh, the story uh, uh, concludes, or, or at least advances, that just a couple of days before Anthony Porter's uh, execution, um, the Northwestern University uh, journalism um, uh, project, which was, I think at the time, named um, an innocence project or something um, at least uh, a- akin to that, presented what they called new evidence uh, to the governor uh, at the time, uh, Governor Ryan, uh, which included uh, a recantation of, uh, of a witness statement uh, as well as offering up a alternative suspect to these murders. Al Story Simon was a man um, from Milwaukee at the time who uh, the journalism uh, students and their um, investigators for this uh, innocence project had um, had gone uh, several times to um, to see Mr. Uh, Mr. Simon. Uh, kind of accosted him in his own house, presented him with um, a fake uh, interview of what was reported to be a witness as to Al Story Simon's uh, involvement in uh, in this murder. That uh, Mr. Simon was offered uh, money and uh, a TV deal and maybe a movie deal and other things from. Um, the uh, professor, uh, David Prokas, who was, who was in charge of this whole project, but was uh, offered uh, things of value um, if he would uh, admit um, his involvement in this crime. It was uh, uh, reportedly uh, presented to Mr. Simon as um, this man is set to be executed in a very short period of time, and and uh, and you can save him, and don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you. That uh, that after we get him off of death row, um, you know, then your case obviously will fall apart, and there's going to be nothing to it, and then nothing that, that can be done. Or at least words to that effect. What Mr. Simon um, wasn't told, though, is that uh, as a result of um, not only his statement but uh, his ex-wife, who had provided a fabricated statement as a result of a a recreation that was staged by uh, the journalism students that didn't take into account um, most of the um, the physical layout and and what was seen. So it was all very, very deceptive, very one-sided, very biased, um, and kind of packaged together and made to look as if Al Story Simon was the real killer and not Anthony Porter. Well, uh, when Governor Ryan uh, viewed this uh, petition uh, for the stay of uh, of execution, uh, he was so moved by what appeared to be uncontroverted uh, evidence as to Mr. Porter's innocence um, that he uh, overturned the conviction. First of all, he stayed the execution overturned the conviction and released him uh, from 
from prison. Um, little did he know at the time that, um, in fact, Anthony Porter was, in fact, the real murderer, that what he was presented was um, fake information, was biased information, was intended to get Mr. Uh, Porter out that the ends certainly justified the means uh, in that situation, and uh, and Mr. Porter was uh, uh, was let go. But the real tragedy doesn't stop with this murderer being released. Uh, it then continues on with Al Story Simon, somebody who was not um, uh, any way involved in this murder, um, being kind of sacrificed or offered up by the uh, this innocence group and and uh, and was uh, indicted and and uh, and convicted uh, himself for uh, for the murder. Well, you know when 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 justice is so flipped on its head that way, and when um, when individuals are willing to provide fake uh, or false intentionally so false information to justify getting some murderer out of uh, out of prison, it creates a real strain on on the system. The term for it is innocence fraud. Innocence fraud is the intentional um, application to a um, a higher uh, authority that is uh, not just a court, but probably a governor or somebody who has clemency as an option uh, to them to provide. Um, uh, false information to secure uh, somebody's release. It's become more prevalent as the years have gone by. It very much uh, occurs in capital cases where uh, where death penalty activists, uh, opponents, um, uh, do anything they can to to uh, to secure stays of execution, to try to raise some doubt, uh, you know, to kind of thwart the uh, uh, the justice process in in in, uh, in in going through with uh, with the sentences, and so um, it's a problem that hasn't been addressed very much. One of the practical issues is um, nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to say that lawyers uh, or investigators are um, intentionally providing false information to the courts in order to secure. Uh, criminals releases, but it turns out it happens all the time, uh, and it's becoming somewhat of a cottage industry, especially with the uh, the explosion of civil lawsuits after exonerations of of individuals. You saw Stephen Avery after his exoneration uh, filing a thirty six million dollar lawsuit against uh, Manitowoc County. In fact, uh, Anthony Porter, and you talk about. Uh, uh, I hope I can say this on your show, but it's sure. like about having brass balls. Sure. Anthony Porter, despite um, having killed these two people, sued the cops afterwards for his wrongful conviction, and the uh, attorneys who were um, representing Al Story Simon at the time and who were um, who were uh, interested that uh, justice did not continue to be. Um, kind of turned on uh, uh, on his head, uh, had to retry the case basically in in the civil courts um, for the for the lawsuit. Um, showed the jury that uh, the Anthony Porter in fact was the murderer. He was the person who was let out of uh, uh, let out of jail. That the cops did nothing wrong at the time. Um, the cops didn't plant in the evidence or didn't uh, you know kind of. Uh, 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 ensure that uh, that an innocent man uh, uh, went to prison, and Mr. Porter got uh, got nothing. Got just what he should have gotten, zero, right. um, for what uh, what he called a uh, uh, a uh, uh, an unwarranted or a, or a false uh, conviction and and wrongful incarceration. And so um, that case turned out uh, the way it did only because. Of some extraordinary work on behalf of the people pushing back against against innocence fraud, but there's been so many cases 
that uh, either the original prosecutors aren't around anymore or perhaps uh, there isn't any pushback from um, victims groups or, or victims' families, and these things kind of slide through in the municipalities who are sued. Uh, you know, they just write a check. They don't have time to, uh, to defend all of these, uh, uh, all of these uh, civil rights claims and, and the like, and they, uh, they simply um, uh, settle them. But to the, to the tune of millions and millions of dollars, Illinois has paid out millions in reparations for um, for false uh, false conviction uh, cases, and that, of course, is the um, uh, is the 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 secret uh, to these um, uh, to these efforts for uh, for wrongful um, convictions and exonerations. Not only uh, are they uh, they mean the attorneys who are trying to secure the release of these. Murderers. Not only are they trying to get their clients out uh, of prison, but thereafter, it's the same lawyer uh, who uh, oftentimes uh, is the civil lawyer for the uh, for the exonerated individual, and who then stands to uh, to win um, millions of dollars in um, in damages. Um, I'll use Kathleen Zellner as. Uh, a very good example of this new cottage industry. She pretends that she takes these cases for no fee, what's called pro bono. Uh-huh. Um, yet, uh, when she gets the assurances of these um, of these uh, convicted individuals, at the same time she signs them up in a um, in a retainer agreement to handle the civil case that ever comes out of it, and so. Uh, she so, is so someone the like attorney of record. She stands to you know sorry. someone like like uh, 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 Ryan Ferguson as an example, right? Uh, who Kathleen Jenner was successful in in getting uh, the courts uh, to release him based upon recanted uh, <laughs> witness statements, and thereafter uh, they settled the case for I think it's eleven million dollars or or something like that. And although Kathleen Zellner uh, uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, Say very much about uh, how it is that she's able to, um, you know, to 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 pay for all of these defenses or to live the uh, the lavish lifestyle that uh, that she's taken on. The fact that she um, stands to get a large percentage uh, of all of these awards from uh, from all these individuals is is and and should be very clear. Then uh, why this. Um, this process, why this um, this industry of not only exonerations but then thereafter turning around and suing municipalities has become uh, such a profitable one and such a niche that Attorney Zellner and others in the post-conviction realm have carved out for themselves. So, and there was also not just uh, suing the state, but there was also money in ways that uh, you wouldn't normally think about, like book deals. Movie deals were promised. Uh, TV deals were promised. Um, so I, I don't think that's something that the average true crime watcher thinks about when they're being presented uh, with a case from a journalist. Yeah, and, 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 and why would you? People are led to believe, at least I was when I grew up, that, that attorneys won't lie to the court. They won't present false information Mm-hmm. knowingly uh, uh, to a court, but it it disturbingly turns out that it happens a lot. And it's it's very much the ends justifying the means, as I've said, especially, you know, when a murderer has been convicted and, and getting uh, that person out, whether it's the Innocence Project or whether it's a, a private organization or, or even individuals that, uh, that set out to get them exonerated, it is... Um, it's a lot of resources being thrown um, at uh, at these cases, um, and uh, and I think uh, not surprisingly, uh, not a whole lot of, uh, of pushback uh, from either the original uh, prosecutors because they're not involved anymore in the case once it's done. Then you know it either goes to the state or it goes to uh, municipalities um, defense lawyers or, or insurance defense lawyers or 
or uh, lawyers that just aren't as equipped to um, to delve into the uh, the details um, and complexities of, of forensics or of of, uh, of criminal prosecutions and the outcome, um, you know, un- unfortunately is predictable. That is, uh, when you have, uh, you know, one side who's got a lot of resources and throws a lot of money uh, because it's going to make a lot of money, uh, and the other side doesn't, uh, the outcome, as I mentioned before, is uh, is sadly predictable. Oh, just, I mean, that's what's so interesting to me about why people are so suspicious of you. I mean... And your motive, I mean, you look at making a murderer and making a murder too. Now that's sort of like a, that's making money from, from Netflix, right? Um, well, presumably. Yeah, yeah presumably hope, they right? Didn't, they didn't do it for free. They, for right, they didn't do it for free. They, they got awards. A, a, a what I mean, series for nothing. <laughs> besides your book, uh, trying to counteract it, I mean, you, and besides your salary as a, as a DA, I mean, what was really the motive for you? Was that thirty-six million dollars going to, and was it even going to be thirty-six million dollars? Was that going to come out of your pocket and well, Lieutenant what, Link's pocket? Let me, just, <laughs> let me stop you because it gets yeah. even crazier. Because I wasn't the man who walked DA at the time. Right, I was a Kelly, Kelly Mac County DA. I didn't even have any connection to Manitowoc County. It wasn't even my county. Right. I had uh, had been assigned special prosecutor in the case. Was basically doing a favor for the uh, for the county next door, and so the suggestion that myself or any state investigators who had nothing to do with the Avery case, or any Calumet County investigators who had nothing to do with it, or the crime lab who had nothing to do with it, you can go on and on and on about these people that had nothing <laughs> to gain by risking our careers, uh-huh. by risking our freedom, uh, you know, in the suggestion that we would. Um, kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, conspire to make sure this innocent man is is uh, is convicted. And the natural extension, of course, of all this is also included killing this 25 year old photographer. If if the cops, um, you know, planted the evidence, planted the bones, let's say, of, right. of Teresa Habach, well, where did they find those? And so the the <laughs> the argument they made at the jury trial uh, in the Avery case, and I looked right at the jurors, and I said, you better be willing to say the cops killed her if you're going down that road, because there's no other explanation for how they took the bones of this young woman and, quote-unquote, planted them on Avery's property. How did they know it was her? You have a forensic anthropologist who barely could identify these remains as being Teresa Harbach, are you telling me that some cops stumbled upon <laughs> this pile of bones and it just happened to be the woman who uh, had her last appointment with Stephen Avery? What an incredibly fortuitous, uh, you know, uh, piece of luck here by the cops if they just stumbled upon it and and planted uh, these bones. Of course, it's it's absurd to. To even suggest any of this this nonsense, why is it that the cops would kill a, a innocent a 25 year old year old woman? Well, they wouldn't. And if you know Andy Coburn and you know Jim Link, you know the other cops or the prosecutors that were involved in this case. Nobody risking their career for a scumbag like Stephen Avery. Nobody. It's just <laughs> not. It's not going to happen. Why Stephen Avery out of anybody? Why? You know, why haven't the cops been, uh, uh, been accusing all kinds of people of murder their whole career as well? Uh, it, it didn't happen. It's not true. And the fact that these filmmakers were willing to ruin the reputations of these really good cops, willing to ruin my reputation, willing to ruin the reputation of, of crime lab analysts and, and, and other citizens is, is incredibly Shameful. They need to apologize to the cops that they uh, that they cast as villains. They need to apologize to the prosecutors they cast as villains. And now these ordinary citizens, uh, whether it's uh, Ryan Hilgis, the ex-boyfriend of Teresa, or uh, or Bobby Dassey, uh, or anybody else that they suggest uh, 
you know, might be involved or your theory that they might be involved, well, that doesn't do it. You know, you might get away with this stuff in, in New York or California or on one of the coasts, but in Wisconsin, if you're going to accuse good cops and good prosecutors of being crooked, if you're going to accuse them uh, of, of falsely imprisoning somebody, you better have something other than your elbows to, to put on the table because that's a very serious allegation. Um, juries don't buy it. The Avery jury didn't buy it, uh, and I'm very, very surprised that they've convinced all of these people who have watched these shows uh, to uh, to go along with that absurd theory that the cops and the prosecutors together were um, were working to uh, convict an innocent man. In 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 um, a murder in the park, the journalist student said, um, "I'm here to investigate." Anthony Porter's innocence. Now, what's wrong with going from that angle? Well, uh, here's the difference, and it, it demonstrates one of the one of the um, glaring differences in what the state's responsibility uh, in a case is, and what uh, a defense counsel's responsibility is. The state is charged with uh, uh, assuring a just result. We're trying to look for justice and whether the defendant is guilty and he's found guilty or if the defendant is not guilty and is found not guilty, we are equally satisfied with either of those results because because it's a just result. Conversely, though, uh, defense counsel is an advocate for one client. They have no interest in a search for the truth. What they have an interest in doing is advocating for what's in their client's best interest. And always what's in a defendant's best interest is to be released, is to be exonerated. And so anything that achieves that goal, uh, they're doing their job. So you can see the, uh, the huge incentive that there might be uh, for um, a post-conviction uh, counsel to do anything they can to get somebody uh, out of jail, whether or not it has any relation to what really happened. So a search for the truth is not their goal. It's always, though, the goal of the state of Wisconsin. You know, I would, uh, I've been asked, so well, what would you change in, in, uh, uh, in the post-conviction process where uh, you'd make innocence fraud a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit uh, less easy to achieve, and uh, and and my thought is uh, that after a conviction, after somebody's already been convicted, that everybody's goal, both the state and the defense at that time, should be a search for the truth. Okay. Well, if that happened, you follow me here. If that yeah. happened, mm-hmm. somebody like Attorney Zellner who presents uh, cherry picks and presents, uh, you know, one or two little uh, little pieces of evidence that uh, that supported the exoneration of her client, she would also be required to present all of the evidence she's uncovered that uh, confirms the guilt of her client. So if she does retesting of things and it, and it verifies what the crime lab found and it and it points to her client, and that she should have to tell the um, uh, the courts that she should tell in a post conviction sense. She should have to have the same standards of a search for the truth. She should have to present that evidence which makes her client look bad, just like uh, it looks good. Now it's going to be um, probably never um, adopted because of the adversary. Uh, system that we have, even in a post-conviction sense, um, you know, the adversarial uh, system is still very much at play. It's not a search uh, for the truth, but, um, you know, maybe I'm just um, uh, so familiar with all of the shenanigans that uh, that go on to, to get people out that it's a game, you know, it's a game to, uh, uh, to many of these Many of these lawyers and, and many of these advocates on, on, on getting somebody out, you know, Jerry Buting uh, famously uh, in making murder uh, when they find the 
the hole in the vial of blood tells his partner, Gene Strang, well, it's game on. It's, it's game <laughs> on now, Jerry. You get, or, 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 Gene, you get where we're going with this. And they kind of laugh about the hole in the vial, and Jerry Buting opines right there on, on camera that, well, it was probably a cop who came in and, and put and put a needle in this this vial of blood and 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 planted the evidence and they're kind of laughing about about its its game on. Well, the real answer, of course, is that Jerry Buting at the time making a murder, um, you know, comes out and certainly by the time of trial knew exactly how that hole in the vial of blood got there. Nurse Marlene Krenitz in January of of ninety six uh, put that hole there when she. When she drew the blood of, of Stephen Avery, that's how the blood got in there. That's why there's a hole in the top of, of every purple topped tube. How do you think the blood gets in there? Through, you know, osmosis <laughs> right. or something? So it goes in through a needle, <laughs> uh, through the uh, needle on the top of the, uh, 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 of, of the, uh, of the tube and it, and it leaves, uh, it leaves a hole. Jerry Bidding knew that. And again, please, Please uh, invite your listeners to wrap their arms around this. Jerry Buting knew, the filmmakers knew where that hole came from, yet they still claimed that it was the centerpiece of this um, this planting theory, and it was cited by uh, by many uh, who uh, who supported Avery's exoneration uh, as uh, kind of the smoking gun. Well, this shows you know, that the cops went in and, and did it. Well, it's a lie. It's an absolute lie that they know. They know they're deceiving you when they say, I wonder how this hole got there. Yet nobody calls them on it after the fact. Nobody, years after making a murderer, says, well, how could you lie to millions of people like that? How could you paint this in such a false light that you suggested that this was how the cops planted evidence when you know that to not be true? It's It's... It's sad. It's shameful. It's all done for money. And whether it's uh, whether it's the attorneys or the filmmakers, the fact that they're willing to throw these cops under the bus, that they're they're willing to ruin their reputations, my reputation, those of others involved, just under the um, under the hope that uh, they can make more money off it, or they can um, you know they can advance uh, their narrative. Uh, is absolutely despicable, and uh, and I, I still hope, still to this day, hold out hope that eventually they'll be held accountable for uh, for these numbers of lies that they've perpetrated. You seem to have a, a real your book, at least. I, I gathered a, you have a real distaste for Jerry uh, Buting. Is is that right? Uh, and not so much Dean Strang. Is is that tr- is that is that well? Is that correct? It, it, I, I don't know that uh, that that this case is uh, is a fair characterization. First of all, I respect both of them and the work that they do as lawyers. Uh, Jerry Buting uh, has done uh, a lot of work for the uh, for the state bar on, on justice reforms and, um, and 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 other measures. But since the uh, trial and since the trial concluded, one of the two lawyers has been. Um, I would call uh, incredibly classy, and that is Dean Strang. Dean's never suggested that Stephen Avery was innocent. Uh, Dean said, this was my job, and I did the absolute uh, best I could. Uh, and uh, in my dealings with uh, Dean, he's always been uh, a gentleman. He's always been, um, he's always been professional. Now, uh, Jerry Buting, on the other hand, has um, advanced uh, things on Twitter that he knows uh, to not be uh, true. He has been particularly um, smarmy. Uh, he has gone on a world tour, uh, profiting from uh, his representation of of Stephen Avery. That tour has included the U.S., included a, a complete tour of Europe, complete tour of Australia. Um, you know, he's, as I've always claimed, uh, uh, profited more than any other losing attorney uh, maybe in history on, on a case. When you look at uh, the results of the case, 
uh, when you look at uh, what it is Stephen Avery got for a sentence, you know, which was life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, you would think by the love fest shown to these two lawyers, whether it's uh, by, uh, uh, you know, law schools or the legal community or or just the general public that they were the, you know, the, the best lawyers since since sliced bread. Well, um, you know, I, I hate to be the the one who points out the obvious, but, but a <laughs> potted plant could have gotten every life without parole. Right. They and, lost and, that and, case. And, I mean, as bad as you can lose. <laughs> yeah. Life without parole is the worst that you can possibly do. Yeah, Wisconsin and, and doesn't it, have the death you know, penalty. You know, I, 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 I jokingly say, and it, 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 it may be in bad humor, but I jokingly say, you know, you could buy a potted plant for $14 and set that next to Jerry's <laughs> meeting. And both of them got the same result for Stephen Avery. One just cost 240 grand more than the other one. And, <laughs> and you know, so that's, um, that makes me wonder why, uh, why they've, they continue to be such, uh, not only media darlings, but, but in the legal profession when, uh, it's been so resoundingly debunked what they presented by way of deception in making a murderer and, and, and why some of their, um, post-conviction comments have, have really been, uh, been disturbing. Even Kathleen Zellner calls them both, um, uh, ineffective. You know, it has claimed ineffective assistance of counsel that right. they didn't even raise the level of, of, of minimally competent lawyers that Avery's claiming that they were so bad in their representation of him that for that reason alone, he should be granted a new trial. Well, you can't have it both ways. You can't have these were the best lawyers, you know, since Clarence Darrow, uh, but also say they weren't even minimally capable of of, of handling the defense. You don't get to pick and choose, you know, how great a job these guys did uh, just based upon the the results that, that you want to come out. And so, um, you know, I'm hopeful that uh, uh, that Jerry will stop uh, taking personal shots at me, stop, uh, you know, attacking the one person uh, who's, uh, who's pushing back with what actually happened uh, in the case, that he'll, he'll realize that it's, uh, not very classy to uh, refer to me as being sweaty, or, or you know, both uh, both he and Kathleen Zellner um, uh, uh, really enjoy uh, commenting upon uh, you know me perspiring when I give uh, when I give speeches and things. They just uh, they love to talk about my yeah uh, my my personal characteristics <laughs> or or anything else, and it's it's attack the messenger, of course, just the uh, is the goal rather than having anything of value uh, that can be presented by way of uh, new evidence. Instead, uh, you attack the person whose who's, uh, who's main, um, apparently his, uh, uh, his, his, his main defect was uh, having uh, done his job and secured the conviction of these, of these two murderers. And so to, uh, to continue to cast me as a villain, to continue as Ms. Zellner has recently said, that I'm primarily responsible for these two guys um, still being in prison in some kind of a, 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 a crooked or, or, or misconduct uh, approach is, um, well, it's, it, it's something most lawyers don't do. It's something most lawyers wouldn't ever do, and, and I'll allow others to, um, to draw the conclusion as to why Kathleen Zellner and and I suppose uh, to uh, a little bit lesser extent, Jerry Buting uh, continued to um, uh, to peddle the, the same nonsense. Right, and it appears it, it, that you're only allowed to be sweaty when you after you've killed a woman and you're putting that sweat under the hood of her car. That's that's the <laughs> allowable allowable sweat. I, I don't understand why they keep keep calling you that. And I guess it's just character assassination and. For sure. And that should be a red flag for any true crime watcher. Instead of talking about the evidence, they're painting villains um, of the um, prosecutor. And secondly, um, I wanted to ask you, um, it just seems really sad to me as a woman, this is a case where you had 
two awesome w- women working on the forensics. P- Pam Strum, is that correct? You pronounce her name? No, uh, actually, Sherry Culhane was Sherry the, Culhane was the, was the DNA um, analyst, and of course uh, Leslie, Leslie Eisenberg. Eisenberg, Dr. Eisenberg, one of Thank the you. very best forensic anthropologists in in the world. We were fortunate enough to uh, to have both of them working. You know, Sherry Culhane, the the analyst, uh, the DNA analyst, was the same analyst who uh, right. who, who exonerated yes. Stephen Avery, who tested the hair yeah. that got Stephen Avery out of prison. So she either she either is incompetent and doesn't know what she's doing, which was uh, in the second case, or she was the best yeah. analyst ever and found the DNA that exonerated him. So once again, if you've noticed, um, you'll have <laughs> the same individual uh, wearing two different hats depending upon what, what right. uh, what they want to spoon feed you and what they want the results to be. But I mean, you have you have three women, the two filmmakers and Kathleen Zellner, all, uh, you know, representing or, or trying to get the guy released who brutally murdered uh, and raped a woman. Why are they supporting the men who committed violence against a woman? And why, you know, why are they painting you as the villain and not and not Avery? It's just so well, it's upside a, down well, to it's me. A, it's a it's a it's a it's a horrible double standard, and it is one that sadly isn't just seen in 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 a case like this. Um, you know, as uh, uh, as an example, uh, politically, uh, unfortunately, we've gotten to such a place where where different. Um, standards of presumption of innocence, as an example, are are applied to somebody depending upon what political party they they belong to. And so, you know, I I, I go back and I I I, I don't like to to compare uh, politics to right. uh, to the court of law. But when those two things converge, right, like in the uh, like in the the Judge Kavanaugh hearings, when when politics and and uh, concepts of due process and 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 other firmly held uh, concepts uh, converge. It is so troubling to see many millions of people willing to, you know, forget what they've been advocating for 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 many 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 years, if not their entire careers, when it comes to you know the ends justifying the means. How you want it to come out depends upon what process you know you you get to take and so when Avery um, uh, abuses uh, his ex-wife and when uh, when he uh, abuses his girlfriend uh, Jody Sikowski and all of these women saying I was lucky to get out of that relationship alive why are they not believed why all of a sudden are these women marginalized and why are these women you know, not uh, not supported, uh, or when uh, when when Jody was brave enough to that was uh, to disturbing. Take, take her story when she escaped the the abuse that was the Avery family, and when she went on uh, HLN, I think it was, and she explained that she was beaten um, and she was threatened that she'd be killed if she didn't do exactly what she was supposed to. Why 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 is she? Uh, why is she disbelieved? Why is she so marginalized? Or, or Avery's uh, underage niece? Uh, why would she be disbelieved for uh, for coming forward with allegations of of this is a man who raped me, or or others that have been assaulted or abused by this man? The question, of course, um, shouldn't be uh, why um, you know are these women vilified and why. Why aren't they believed? Um, but what is it about Stephen Avery that that engenders such support? What is it about this this um, clearly uh, violent, uh, foul-mouthed, uh, uh, really evil man? Uh, why has he, he garnered the uh, the support of all these uh, uh, of all these people, including uh, including women? That uh, that that line up apparently to not only uh, want to begin relationships uh, with this man, but also uh, also to support him. Will do anything to get him 
him out of prison. You know, you wouldn't believe the attacks that um, that not just I've gotten because of this, but my wife. You know, my wife, who has obviously had no connection with the case, nothing other and it's than very nice, by the way, know, being, being my wife, <laughs> yeah. but the, but but threatening her life and 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 calling her all kinds of of names and commenting upon her looks and commenting upon you know everything about uh, about her, the entitlement that uh, that these people around True. the world feel uh, to not only attack me but to attack uh, my family members to say. Um, you know, they hope that that my daughter gets raped, and I have to sit and watch it. Well, well, where, where, where? What happened to civility? What what happened to disagreeing with somebody and then saying, "Well, I disagree with you because X, Y, Z," and not um, having thousands of uh, of messages of of hate and violence and death threats uh, lodged towards myself, my family, the officers. Uh, involved in the case, Colburn and Link and their families and, and really other prosecutors. Uh, how is all of that okay? And uh, and 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 that's got to be answered eventually. This has got to this has got to come to a to a stop eventually. You've got to realize there's real people on the other end of these uh, of of these threats and these these horribly hateful uh, statements, including innocent people like. Uh, um, you know, like like my wife or other family members uh, who had nothing to do with these cases. I just don't agree that they're fair targets for the vitriol that is um, that is expressed by a by so many thousands or or hundreds of thousands of people around the world towards us. So that's a good place to stop. We're running out of time. I I, I cannot thank you enough um, for this interview. I've learned so much, and I really enjoyed your book, which um, I didn't, honestly, it's, this isn't, you know, to me, it just seems so overwhelmingly a case of guilt. I didn't think I would be as fascinated and riveted as I was. It's an excellent book. I hope everybody goes out and buys it, Avery by um, Ken Kratz, and thanks again for this interview. Really appreciate appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Thanks very much. Thanks.